Hello and welcome to Criminal Justice in a Nutshell. My name is John Fisher and I am your host today for another chapter of, of Criminal Justice in the Nutshell. Today's episode is called Crimes Against Property. It's what we lose. Um, again, this is chapter 10 out of the Frank Smollinger Criminology textbook. Um, but, and again, let me define a nutshell lecture is 15, 20 minutes long. It's going to summarize some of the key concepts of the lecture, of the chapter of this particular book, and then we're going to um, have discussions about crimes against property and whatnot, and blah, 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 and so on and so forth. Um, it's not going to cover everything. It's not going to cover all of the different aspects of property crimes. But let's first start with defining property crimes. Property crimes are defined by the FBI as those crimes that focus on property, not individuals. Okay, they target things, not people. Okay, according to the FBI, there are four major property crimes, and we've talked about this in tracking crime, we talked about this in the person crimes, and we'll discuss it again. On part one of the Uniform Crime Report, which is published annually by the FBI, there are eight major crimes. There are four person crimes and four property crimes. The four property crimes include burglary, larceny, motor vehicle, theft, and arson. Um, these four crimes that are listed are, is what we track uh, crime rates within any city. We can identify and we can not notice that there, are four, uh, there are major problems within the community based upon property crime. William Bonger stated that crime and criminality is, finds itself in a world where it's between the haves and the have-nots. And I know a lot of criminal justice professors and a lot of criminal uh, justice professors they're going to talk about Richard Queenie. They're going to talk about Karl Marx. They're going to talk about um, the Communist Manifesto and materialism and conflict theory. And we've talked about that before. Um, even, even I have. Uh, but today, William Bonger, I want to talk briefly about William Bonger and property crime. He says, and what William Bonger says is that we will commit crime based upon our desire for things. Because we live in a world of materialism. See? If you look behind me, that's my camper. Let me get out of the way. Okay. It's an 18-foot uh, Jayco Featherlight Sport. Over, it's 18 feet long. Now, it's got a double bed and a single bed, uh, bunk beds. Um, the guy across the, the road from us, I'm at the park at the Dinosaur Valley State Park. The guy across the road from us is, is running a 36-foot fifth wheel. Um, there's 70-foot RVs and, and Class A mobile homes in this place. Um, there's a mobile home like my father's just a couple spots down. But William Bonger tells us that we're going to focus on crime. We're going to focus on criminality. We're going to focus on wants, needs, and desires. And if we want something, we're going to um, try to obtain it legally. If we cannot obtain it legally, we're going to obtain it illegally. Uh, Robert Merton stated, and he also talked about this um, haves and haves nots more along the lines of wants, lusts, and desires. If we want something, if we desire something, we will do whatever we can to legally obtain it. If we cannot obtain it legally, we will obtain it illegally. And uh, as a matter of being, uh, William Bonger tells us that we will protect what we have and keep those that don't have it from obtaining it. It is what brings about hate groups. It's what brings about hate itself and entitlement. 
and all of those things that come with a socialistic society. Okay? Everybody in the world should own a camper. Uh, so if you don't own a camper, you should be able to be given one. If you can't give one, if you can't get one, you're going to steal one. Okay, so... Um, that's where property crime comes into, and that's the theory behind property crime. Uh, burglary is the unlawful entry into a structure uh, for the purpose of a felony commission, generally theft. You break and enter into a home is burglary. And not to be confused with robbery. Robbery is taking some, something from a person. Okay, so I'm hungry, I need food. I go and I break into your house for the purpose of stealing food. That's burglary with, and theft. Uh, burglary is just that. It's the unlawful entry into any structure. The FBI distinguishes between burglaries involving forcible entry and unlawful entry and attempted forcible entry. And they make the difference based upon you know, what you've done. Are you, is it a home invasion? Uh, is it, did you break the doors? Did you break the windows? Uh, or did you just walk in, an unauthorized entry? Okay, so larceny and theft is the most frequently occurring crimes in America today. If you go to citydata.com, you type in any, any crime. And the greatest amount of crimes that occur in that community, in that area, is going to be larceny and theft. It's the unlawful taking, carrying away, lending, riding away of property from the possession of somebody else. Uh, they are, you know, they include pickpocketing and um, not auto theft, but pickpocketing and stealing bicycles and stealing lawnmowers. I know when I first moved to Big Spring a lot of years ago, I wanted to get those little driveway solar lights. And I bought, I don't know, $40 worth of these lights. And I lined my driveway. I have an H driveway. So it's got the H you know, part that goes up into the house, into the carport. And then it has the, the loop part of the H that goes circles around and goes back to the driveway. It's a circle drive. So I bought $40 worth of these solar lights and I put them along the driveway. And the next morning, they were gone. Every one of them had been stolen by, by somebody, by the neighbors or, or somebody. And that is theft. It is the largest category. Um, and it is um, bad news. Okay, um, identity thieves. That's another form of theft. Um, it is a special new kind of theft that people will obtain credit, merchandise, they will find and purchase services all in somebody else's name. Uh, the one that I, that I find most humorous is that people steal their children's identities. If they've ruined their chances of getting an electric bill without a great big humongous deposit, um, they'll use their child's name and social security number because they haven't ruined that credit yet. And that is also a form of identity theft. Uh, there's a lot of hackers going on into the internet and the computers uh, where they try to hack into your computer to get passwords and, and account numbers and all of those things that, so that they can steal your money from you. If they can obtain your social security number, your address and your phone number, they can get, social, they can get credit cards and house loans and car loans all in your name and then never pay for them and then the bill collectors come chasing you. Uh, so it's important that you protect yourself against identity theft. There have been a lot of um, increases in the, in the punishments for identity theft. Motor vehicle theft. There are several different reasons why people will steal a car. Um, but motor vehicle theft is defined as the theft or attempted theft of a motor vehicle where the term motor vehicle refers to uh, any various means of transportation. It includes automobiles, buses, motorcycles, snowmobiles, boats, um, anything that um, is 
has a motor and it's a form of and it's a vehicle it's a form of transportation okay there are several different types of um, reasons why people steal cars uh, the most is the opportunistic and the most opportunistic car theft is joyriding it's a bunch of teenagers that uh, are seeking fun and thrills and you leave the ignition your keys in the ignition they steal your car they drive it across town, they drive it around town, they go show off to their friends, and then they ditch your car. You'll get it back in a couple days, a couple weeks. The next form of um, auto theft is for parts. You know, it, you know, they'll scrap your car, and a lot of times you, know, you can sell a car for parts, and it will make you money. So you steal somebody else's car, and then you sell it for parts and once the part is gone there's no way to track it because the serial number doesn't end up then the VIN number of the vehicle doesn't end up on every part of the car okay. um, and then there's sorry I'm in a park I'm in the woods I was crawling up my side um, arson arson refers to uh, any willful or malicious burning or attempting to burn with or without the intent of defraud. A lot of arson goes about um, to defraud the insurance companies. A dwelling, a house, a public building, motor vehicles, aircraft, personal property of another. In fact, the number one crime committed uh, by disgruntled girlfriends is arson. They'll take the guy's clothes, they'll take all of his clothes, they'll throw it out into the yard. No, we'll get, light it on fire and let it burn. Um, so there are three general groups of fire starters of arsons um, that are defined in the text. In the, in the text, if you um, send me an email and telling me about those three general groups of juvenile fire starter, starters, um, those three juvenile arsons, send me an email with those three and I will give you extra credit on your next test. Um, persistent thieves and professional thieves. A persistent thief is someone who continues in property crimes despite um, no better than ordinary level of success. Um, they keep stealing. It's mostly, um, well, it's persistence. They keep stealing, they keep stealing. There's the occasional offender, and this offender steals primarily by opportunity. You leave your lawnmower out in the yard, he's going to steal your lawnmower. You leave your weed eater or your bicycle, you know, it's an opportunity to steal. Uh, I was walking down the street because I walked back and forth to work. My house is 20, my house is 22 houses away from my office at Howard College. And I was walking home one day and walking on the sidewalk and there was a pickup truck parked on the side of the road and the window was open and I looked inside the window and it had the guy's cell phone was there his wallet was there at seven or eight credit cards and he had about a hundred dollars and the keys to the truck all sitting on the console and the window was open you know I stood there for a few minutes wondering what I should do should I call a cop should I go knock on a door um should I try and find out who this idiot is um, that's left this opportunity for crime to be committed? Because most crime, most property crime is also opportunity crime. Because there's an opportunity. You think that, you know, uh, hey, I'm going to go do this. I've got an opportunity to do this. You have your professional criminals who make a living from criminal pursuits. Okay, they are your professional fences and thieves like Ocean's 11, 12, 13. What are we on now? Ocean's 92. Um, these groups of people, these, these professional thieves um, use fences and they use other things to, or other people, to steal something and then to resell it. A pawn shop or on eBay or on the local community sales board. You've got to be careful when you're buying and selling those things. Um, the three basic categories of burglars, 
Um, there are three categories. There's low-level burglars. Uh, they're primarily juveniles or inexperienced. They commit their crimes on a spur of the moment. They see the opportunity and they take it. The middle-range burglars often go back and forth between legitimate pursuits. They have a job, you know, they, but they're just supplementing their job through the criminality of thievery. And then there are your um, high-level burglars uh, who are professionals. They earn good money in, in, and living off the proceeds of their crime, which are carefully planned. They target their they specifically target and stalk their target. Uh, there's a Pierce Brosnan movie called The Crown Affair. Uh, that's a really good movie, and it's about this professional professional burglar. Uh, Entrapment with Sean Connery and Catherine Zeta-Jones is another good movie for property crime. It actually makes them like Robin Hoods, you know. Uh, our, uh, the movies, you know, like... The, Crown, the Thomas Crown Affair and um, Entrapment and Heat and the Oceans movies. Uh, they glorify thievery and the professional thieves. Granted, while you know, Jeffrey Dahmer and the serial killer movies make these bad guys look evil and you know, make everybody dis, you know, dislike them. Uh, the burglary and thief movies they're glorified you know, they're they're everybody's heroes um so anyway burglary theft arson car theft car theft is uh the last category and you know, we covered car theft as well. So we've covered all four categories, all four major categories of the uh, property crimes as listed by, uh, or in the textbook, and by the FBI in the Uniform Crime Report. My name is John Fisher, and this is Criminal Justice in a Nutshell. I hope you have a very, very good day.